have a quick look at these ropes and see how they're holding up because we've been giving them a hiding. So three and a half metre bridle on the front. You want just enough length so you can do a clove hitch, right? We'll show you a clove hitch. Might as well quickly show you. Come in a bit, Kev. Because you've got to be able to tie this up. You don't want these hanging down like that. And you want enough length so you can do a clove hitch. So this is how you do a clove Hopefully you know how to do it. But if you don't, you're always over. And then you cross. This is a really tricky bit underneath. It should look like that. Now that's such a simple knot but it's one of the best knots to learn and so it's it's a nice neat knot. Two loops and a cross. Might as well show that, show you that again. Now if you're tying ropes off, what you use this for is everywhere you want to start a tie. So if you're tying with a rope on your roof rack or anything like that, this is where you start. You know, um, it's not a knot that you can you know tighten up or anything but it's the start of, of all your knots when you're using rope. So you leap over, you cross, and you're underneath there. Okay. Now in this bridle, I've, I've, I've made all this up, and I've inlaid in there a piece of Chinese, it is, uh, 10 mil. And that gives a little bit, uh, you can sort of feel where the center point is, but just gives a little bit, <laughs> little bit uh, more thickness. And, uh, you know, uh, that extra, it gives a little bit uh, larger diameter. And uh, a larger radius or a larger diameter is, is, is does I mean, make a little bit of difference. So it makes it a bit stronger. So I've inlaid that piece in there. And... Now, when we sell this kit, because we've got a, a basic or a budget kit, and I've got a sleeve that comes before this here. Now, if you have a look at that, that's got a fair bit of wear there. You can see that? All right, so, no, no wear on this side, and on the bottom, there is a fair bit of wear. So that would be an ideal place to have a sleeve. I'll grab one and I'll show you. I've got a sleeve here. So, the kit does come with a sleeve, and I just haven't been using it, but it definitely needs one. Now with Dyneema, and I've been learning a lot about this the last few months, I mean the, 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 like I was saying, the rope itself is pretty much the same. You know, the, the plastic you know, composition of the rope. Most of what the difference is in the coating, the polyurethane coating. And uh, if there's not enough coating, the rope gets very soft. All right? There's a Chinese rope which is this yellow stuff. All right? And that's got a very uh, thick coating all over through the all the fibers before they um, before they um, weave the rope so all the fibers are coated very tough rope that, that stuff so it's and, and and the manufacturers are making it for a, pur a purpose like uh, the Japanese are making it for uh, marine ropes so they'll have more UV stability and not a lot of people uh, are making the rope specifically for soft shackles so you know, I'm, I'm talking to some of the manufacturers and getting them. I've, I've changed a few of the polyurethane coatings. Um, the guys in Bangkok are making some up for me. That's um, this one here is from Bangkok. It's a little bit soft. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit more. This is a 25% polyurethane coating. Um, when it's a water-based, and it's um, that's 25% uh, the polyurethane in mixed with water. So we're going to go like 35%. It's a little bit too soft. The Chinese stuff, I think, is a little bit too hard. A bit too much coating. Um, anyway, that's what it should have. But let's look at this one too. So um, you can see now I'm pre-tension, I pre-tension all of our soft shackles, and it'll look like that. Basically, that's what you want to get, like that, where it's got a slight tilt in the knot, and and it gets a bit of memory. So you can see that it's going to go that way. All right, it's not going to 
it's not doesn't go this way here like that. Okay, I mean you could, and it'll end up pulling another way. But you can see that it's 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 more likely. I mean the knots not it, they won't slip off. They just won't happen. But uh, you know there is a way to tie the soft shackle, and it's you want to put it this way here, so it's like that. And you can see this sleeve here. We've got a little bit of uh, you know it, not burning, but a bit of rub marks. Also on our canvas, uh, you know, tag that says the rating. They're 10 mil, 400 mils long, and 14 ton. These ones. Now this is the a Velcro one, so you can just put around anything. So basically, there's no wear at all there, really. I mean, this soft shackle, the, the soft shackle sleeve we make, is five bucks. If you if you burn one or wear it out, it's no big deal. You can replace that really easy. It's not expensive to get a new one. But so far there's been no wear on that at all, which is good. We'll chuck that back down here. And the other thing in here, like we showed before, there's no wear there at all either. Nothing at all. You saw the difference. There was wear here. You can see that. And that's because, you know, the rope is sort of pulling a little bit back and forth. So in that case, we should have the sleeve on there. And you won't get any wear at all. But on here, there's no wear. Because there's nowhere for it to go. Doesn't matter if the knot's up or down, but the ideal situation is if you're pulling and the knot is about in the middle, okay? You don't really want to have it, so you're pulling about there, so the knot is in the middle. Okay, so on this one here, this is a 20 tonner. You want to be pulling from there, you don't really want to be pulling from there, okay? So the ideal thing is, is get a knot sitting about there. Now the weakest part on these ropes, well that's 20 tonne, that's, that's a 12 mil rope, 20 tonne. The weakest part on this, if they're going to break, is, is this point here. Because that's a single point there. Everywhere else is doubled up. Okay, the, knot, the knots won't come undone. It's not going to slip off, but if it's going to break, it's going to break at this point right here. Okay, anyway that's where you want to have them tied, basically like that. Which is what we've got here. Right, there's nowhere. Chinese, the Chinema they call it, working well. The bridle's working well. I'll now use this sleeve. And the kit that we sell, like I said, comes with that sleeve. So, recommend you using that. Now, if you get a little bit of wear on a soft shackle, it doesn't really matter, okay? I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't matter. You don't want to continually wear. But, uh, you know, when you, when you rate this stuff, Right, this is rated to 20 ton. Now that's this, as as a 12 mil, that's basically held 20 ton for over a minute, and it hasn't shown any signs of breaking. And we'll rate that at 20 ton, right, as a breaking strain. But there hasn't been any sign of breaking. I mean, you could, because the guy that we rate them with, he doesn't want to break them because it's not good for his machine, right? So that'll pull 20 ton and hold. No signs of any 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 breaking at all. If you, uh, I could get my pocket knife now. And I could cut that line there, right? In fact, I'll do that just so I can show you. Now, at 20 ton, that's now going to pull. It'll still be rated to like 18 ton, right? So even if you do a small amount of wear, right? Now that that soft shackle won't break. Now, I've just cut one out of the 12 strands, as you can see. Now, now that you can still rate that it probably um, now the breaking strain if that was going to break 25 is probably going to break now at 22 or 23 tons so well a twelfth of you look you just lost a twelfth of the strength right but um, for what we're doing that's still going to be plenty strong enough you know so I whack this back on here now this is getting this is used a fair bit it's getting a little bit of wear because this is the point that's pulling on here okay so it's sort of moving a little bit you know, I've had a few riggers. The riggers, you know, they're saying, oh, you know, they've said different things. Basically, they're saying that uh, soft shackle on soft shackle will 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 burn, and and it'll. Um, I've had a few guys on Facebook saying, oh, you know, you, you can't use it like that because it'll it'll melt and it'll 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 cut in half. Well, we've just done 20. I reckon about 20 recoveries, and we we might have lost half a percent or. You know, there's there's very very few fibres there that have worn. And if I had a sleeve on this, we wouldn't get, be getting any fibres. So, 
you know, to say I'm not a rigger and I'm not doing rigging, we're not rigging, right? So for the four-wheel drive recovery type situation, which is what these are made for, what I've designed, you know, what I'm using these for, um, there's no problem going soft shackle, direct to soft shackle. It's not going to tear and rip it. It's not going to burn and, and cut in half, which is what a few guys have been saying to me. So with the clovage, that'll never come undone. That's good there. Um, let's have a quick look at this stuff. This is our Duna bag, but uh, it's also the same size as rubbish bag. It's probably the handiest bag we've had on this trip. We've had rubbish in there, we've had firewood in there, we've had all this stuff in there. This is my old winch rope, and we showed that in a video a little while back. And uh, can you have a look how worn or frayed that is? So it's a very soft rope, okay? It's got a very low percentage of polyurethane coating. And that's one of the reasons you can see some of the fibres starting to come out. All right. Very low percent, probably less than 10% polyurethane coating. But we've been using this several times and I've uh, inlaid the loop in there. Still working fine, still got all, all the strength, but it's very soft rope. So one of the things, getting pulled through the sand does wear them a little bit. But again, as you can look at that there, I mean, it's getting worn. All right, might have lost a percent of its strength, maybe a couple of percent. But I still got, that's the thing with these ropes, the Dyneema style ropes. All right, they can, you can, you can get a bit of wear and they'll still be rated very strong. Uh, this is the Australian rope. And uh, it's holding up really well. It's got a, a pretty, pretty high percentage polyurethane coating. So it's a lot stiffer. You can see how soft it is, eh? It's totally floppy. And that's sort of almost like a cowboy lasso rope, you know. And, uh, you know, these joints, I'm doing a, 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 th a three splice join um, inside here. Very little wear. You don't need uh, you don't need a, a um, sleeve inside that. So that's going really well. And have you seen them under under strain, getting towed through the sand? You know that's pretty harsh. We've we've used this several times. Look at the look at this here. Uh, this is a bridle actually. So this has got the inlaid piece inside there. You probably be able to just see it. See there. So this is actually a bridle I made for Luigi. And yeah, separate rope. That's the so this is a 10 meter extension, and uh, we've used that as well. Same rope, very little wear. And this this blue rope is. I'm going to um, keep getting this. And you, you look at the difference between say a soft shackle because there's a lot of work to tie in these. I mean, you can there is a fair bit of work from start to finish. You know tying them and finishing them and doing them properly is a fair process. But we'll be doing an Australian version of a soft shackle like that for a 14 tonne rating for about 80 bucks, which is equivalent to what the American ones are, the uh, bubble ropes. Now, there's a post, so that's the, where's the, um, now the, yeah, so about 80 bucks for those. Now the Chinese ones, which are these yellow ones here, um, and the tie rope, similar price, they'll be about 50 bucks each, $55 each, so that gives you an idea. And of course it's the same to tie the knot, it's no difference. The difference is just in the cost of the rope. Now they don't, they're, they're rated to basically the same strength, and it's negligible the difference between the Chinese tie and the Australian and the European rope. But um, it's just the price of the rope itself, okay. And we're still tweaking the polyurethane coating, trying to get it right so that, um, you know, if, if it's too much coating, it's they're too stiff and they're hard to use and, they, and it's not good to be too stiff. But if they are too, not enough coating, they're too soft and they, and they wear more. So the funny thing about it is, is, is if it's coated really stiff, it actually is less, it, it loses a little bit of strength if there's too much coating because the rope is strongest when it can really uh, flex uh, tighten up itself. So if it's got too much coating, it actually rates slightly less, which again is negligible, but it's just an interesting fact about it. Several different styles to tie the soft shackle, and I've gone with this style now. I've done, I've tied all the different types, all the different knots, and this is the go. Uh, simple style. It gives you lots of room to open the knot up, 
And uh, one thing I really also like about this style is that um, the tail of the rope is inlaid into this piece here. And you don't have to cut off any waste. If you're tying it like a lot of the other ones, the tail of the rope's got to got to be finished in this piece here before it goes back into a single point. And it's really no point. It doesn't doesn't have to go like that. And so I'd rather tie it where there's no the offcut doesn't get cut off. Okay. So the full amount of offcut is laid in here, and you know that's only helping the rope. Uh, the other thing is, so these are, yeah, this is, this is tie, uh, 20 ton, 12 mil rope. Basically, 12 mil rope is a soft shackle. We're rating about 20 ton. 10 mil rope, we're rating uh, 14 ton, and that's that. We're rating at breaking strain, but it's not breaking or showing any signs of breaking at that. You know, the other thing too is, you know, to point out is when they say breaking strain, it's there's, there's actually no. Australian standard from what I can understand from what I can find out for Recovery gear in Australia now if it's lifting gear in the lifting industry or, or say the lifting industry uh, They work off a working load limit. So we've got a, a tree trunk protector that says working load limit two tons But that's got a one in eight safety factor one in eight so that means that uh, two tons tree trunk protector or a lifting strap uh, a breaking strain, minimum minimum breaking strain MBS is um, 16 ton, right? Now the forward drive industry basically works off breaking strain, and um, on our ratchet straps, for example, the breaking strain we they started to break at eight, 800 kilos, so we can rate them at half 50% of that 400, but we chose to do 200. So the in the ratchet straps, the industry standard is 50% of breaking strain to rate them. It doesn't seem to be anything in the Australian, Australian four-wheel drive recovery gear industry because it's you know it's not really an industry. But um, we're rating them at 20 ton for 12 mil, which is no sign of breaking, and holding for over a minute without sign of breaking, say 20 ton. And for the 10 mil rope, we're rating at 14 ton, which is similar to the Americans as well. But again, we're saying MBS breaking strain. Minimum breaking strain, but there is no sign of breaking that. They'll probably hold 25, 30% more than that. Now this fiber rope here, which has been brilliant, this is their, uh, I think an inch and a quarter, basically their snatch rope. And we've been given that. We used it up at the Cape, it was really good. And it's been given a big workout. It's been getting towed through the sand like, like you've seen, you know. And it's been buried sometimes half a metre, getting towed through the sand. Also very little wear, so that's holding up really well. And a lot of the time, you know, we've got three of these, and you want to use, you know, if you've got a 50 metre pool, you want, you know, two or three of these at least. You know, you want as many of these as you can, really, because the more of these, the better. Um, it just gives them, the more flex and the more stretch you have in that recovery, makes a big difference. Now, you can't have all of them, of course, so we will use the, uh, these ones that, that don't stretch, the, the winch extensions. But these have been brilliant, and as a rope, I think better than a strap. You don't get any twisting, and and these ones here. This is the first rope I got. This is a European rope. So Dyneema is probably a registered name, and it's um, you know, it's, it's basically like become a brand in itself or a generic brand. I mean, Dyneema is technically this is Dyne this is uh, Dyneema rope. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's 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 a European rope. Uh, made by the guys who invented Dyneema, but it's like Esky, you know, the brand Esky was just a brand of a cool box, but everyone calls a, a chili bin an, an Esky, you know, it's a generic. So we, we say Dyneema, but actually that is Dyneema, and this is actually Spectra, so a slightly different composition, um, but this is a, this rope from Thailand is, uh, it's a Japanese made Spectra yarn, and it's woven in Thailand, and we can say Dyneema, but it's not true Dyneema because Dyneema is going to be made by the company that registered that name and licenses under that name. So, you know, the true name for this is, is a Spectra rope, but it's basically the same thing. All right, so there's a new. I'll show you this one too. I'm going to have a bit of lunch. This is um is there like a hollow function where you can Yeah, brand new Aussie rope. That's 
Um, really not again, really nice rope. That's as I finish them like that. It's been pre-strained. This one here is tie rope. And yeah, that's a little eight mil. So I mean we probably should start using these. Only eight mil, very, very soft though, so you know too soft really for what we're doing. And uh, all right, you can see how soft that is. So that's going to be much more susceptible to wear. It's got a very low percentage of polyurethane coating. And this stuff as well is only coated on the outside. So you can see the fibers are white inside. See that? All right, so the fibers are white and it's got a coating, a very thin coating on the outside. Whereas, say, the um, European, right, it's fully coated. All the, the yarn is coated in the polyurethane before, before it's spun into the rope. Same with the Australian. So it's fully coated, the yarn is coated, you can see that, All right. so it's coated before, and the Chinese, the Chinese is the same, fully coated yarn before it's woven with the tie stuff, at the moment, uh, they, they're making rope for Toyota for different things, so they're making a lot of rope for the Toyota industry, for the Toyota Corporation, uh, where they coat the outside only. Now that's got some good and bad points, so it's technically stronger if it's coated on the outside only because the uh, the more coating it does lose a fraction of strength, which is again irrelevant in a way, but um, easier to use and softer. So the trick is to get the right amount of percentage polyurethane coating and that's what we're sort of tweaking at the moment. Anyway, the gear is holding up well, yeah, it's doing its job. A little bit of fraying just doesn't really matter, they're so overrated that um, you know, a little bit of fraying is not going to matter too much, but you want to control that and not get too much fraying. Um, but yeah, we're giving a good test and it's working really well. So we've got this kit on the website, which is basically the bridle kit, two 14-ton uh, shackles, a three and a half metre bridle, and a 20-ton soft shackle. And that's got the basic kit in a nice clear top bag. And that's what you want for the front of your truck there, like that. Uh, which you can see the front of these trucks have got them. Now the colours are going to vary. You know, there's lots of different colours with you know, playing with different colours. So at the moment, the kit's got two. They're they're, they're also black and a, and a green soft shackle. Uh, but the colours don't really matter. It's just the colour and um, doesn't sig doesn't mean anything. Um, anyway, we'll uh, go and have a bit of lunch. Alright, thanks for that.